today I wanted to talk to you about chronic pain and uh, how is chronic pain affected by posture. And uh, so I've been in practice since 1995 and I've treated a lot of patients with uh, problems that could have been prevented had they known or been aware or had done just mild change in their lifestyle. Uh, these seminars that I bring for you, these webinars are specifically designed to help you have a healthier life, not just for today, but also a year, five, ten years from now. And I hope that I can offer you uh, the same results that I offer to my patients as long as you do take the proactive of making the change that's necessary. So this is me. This is what I look like and our office is on Washington Boulevard in Los Angeles, California. So we are pretty much central in LA. And let's talk about posture. Posture is, you know, we're concerned about the pandemic with COVID-19 and our lives have all been changed uh, for greater and lesser degree to a greater and lesser degree because of COVID. But let me tell you something that's a bigger pandemic that we will be facing, not just us and not just our parents, but more importantly, our children. Uh, Gen Z is the one that's most affected by this pandemic that's about to occur. And that is poor posture. Even people who are, even kids that are in athletic and in sports, they all have this subscapularis issue, which causes reduced range of motion of the shoulder, making them more susceptible. Why don't, am I talking to you about this? Because we all are suffering from, we're all hooked to our smart devices. That's our life. I'm sure that you have left the house without your keys, but, or without your car keys, but thinking, oh, I'm just going to open it with my app or you have forgotten to turn off the light. Oh, I'll just turn it off on my app. So we've become so smart device oriented, but our body is trying to keep up with the technology. And unfortunately that's not happening. So pay attention for the next couple of slides because it's going to kind of maybe shine a little light of and pull off the curtain of what's really going on underneath this shell of our body called the skin, right? And let's see what goes on inside. So here is the thing. The most important thing is when you have good posture, the alignment of your body allows your muscles to express themselves 100%. It's almost just like having the axle of your car being out of alignment. Without aligning it, you take it on a road trip which makes the more wear and tear or accelerates the wear and tear on the tires. Tires here are very similar analogy to muscles. So therefore keeping the axle, which is your whole skeletal system, specifically your spine from the, your hairline all the way to the dimples of your back, that's your entire spine. If that area is shifted, that is the center where it connects the appendages, connects the legs, or it connects the head together. So let's talk about your posture and I'll get into the chronic problem, okay? So here we go. Your body has three components. We need to address health in a natural way by three factors. Your physical balance, which is your body. Your chemical balance, which is what you eat and how your body digests and absorbs that. It's the chemical processes that take place and also your mental or your emotional well-being. The emotional well-being is very much related. Now, in this triangle of health, what matters is this triangle is always equiangle, which means that when you affect or when you shrink your physical well-being or your physical health, it will affect your chemical and emotional balance. So let me give you an example. When was the last time you heard a really bad news, sad news, and you were just like so oh, overwhelmed? What happened to your posture? What happened to the physical balance? Did you lose your appetite? Did you want to eat more to just make up for the emotional pain, right? Were you the emotional eater or emotional starver? Uh, so I just wanted to give you that analogy so you understand the impact of these three systems upon each other 
And it's very important that when you pick up one side, the other sides will be affected to a greater or lesser degree. So let's see what we're talking about. Today, this, uh, I took a screenshot off my, my, cam my phone over here when I was doing a research for this particular uh, webinar. And this, every day and every hour, there's over 1 billion texts that are sent back and forth. And there's always 781 billion every month. And unfortunately, 9.4 trillion text messages every year. So these are numbers, right? So if you had a penny to set aside for every text you sent, you sent out, you will be about $1.8 billion richer. Interesting, huh? But let me bring it into more of a realistic factor, right? The normal posture is when your earlobe aligns with the middle of your shoulder. So your body is in an upright position. That is almost the same exact analogy of a table having exact four legs that are equal that are sitting on a flat surface, right? That's biomechanics, correct? That's mechanics, that's how things function. When you shift the power and you place it on one corner more than the other, so when you bring your head down to look at the screen on your phone, you moved your earlobe from the middle of your shoulder by several inches. For every one inch that your earlobe is more forward to your shoulder or your hip, to your shoulder, there's an extra 10 to 15 pounds of pressure on your upper body. So in degrees, that's 15 degrees, which is about one and a half inches, 30 degrees, about 30 inches, 3.2 inches, and then 45 and forward. So the last time you were standing in line waiting for your food to pick up, waiting to pick up your food, how many people were doing this? Where your phone is down here and your eyes are looking at the screen. This is what's causing a toll on your upper back, mid back, and worse than that, your lower back. That's why people who sit behind the desk and are working in a poor ergonomics have a lot of low back problem is along the side of upper back and neck is because of the position of the head. So I want you to imagine taking a bowling ball, if you've ever been bowling, you're holding the ball, this curve is an almost exact replication of the curve in your neck. So when you change the curve, you actually overload the muscles here and you actually overload the other muscles, that overload your frontal muscles as well. So let's Let's move on a little bit from here, all right? You already know, you're busted, you do have, you know, change that, change that habit. Now, what happens physiologically inside your body is quite interesting. When, uh, do you remember that earlobe I told you? That big circle represents your earlobe, the little circle represents your shoulder. In that position, your curve is at its optimal position. Perfect. There's not too much pressure on your discs, there's not too much pressure on your bones, the nerves have, are in proper integrity, muscles are doing their own thing. And when you do move your head more forward compared to your upper body, you get a straight neck. And that straight neck is also the precursor for forward head carriage or also known as text neck. The problem is at this phase, you're really feeling pain. You're not really feeling much of a nerve pinch. You're really feeling like aches and pain and tightness and you kind of try to straighten up your body, but it actually only to find yourself that when you forgot about it, you just melt back into your poor posture. This phase is the most crucial phase into an overall care of a patient because in this phase, it's almost sitting at a, a bifurcation in a road. You can either make a huge difference and have a comeback, or if you're left uncorrected, it will turn into degenerative arthritis, also known as osteoarthritis, which is indicative of wear and tear at the joint level, disc problems, fatigue, joint pain, reduced range of motion, and worse than that, numbness and tickling down your fingers. So you got the data on the other, you can read that on your own or you could actually find it on our website. So 
how do you measure, how do you evaluate, how do you check yourself, right? So there are, there's something called a posture analysis that we do in the office. And that posture analysis is typically we have certain points that we identify when we compare right to left. So if the shoulders are off kilted, if your head is tilted, if your head is shifted to one side, kind of like that Laura Crawford, Angelina Jolene poster with Laura Crawford, she's got this sideway pose, uh, or you have people who wear their purses or their bags on one side, so they have tend to have more higher shoulder on one side compared to the other. So when we do a posture analysis, we actually compare right to left, and the certain points are your earlobe, your shoulders, your, your waist, your hips, your knees, and your ankles. And uh, that's from front and from side, we check the integrity of the alignment of the body, earlobe, shoulder, hip, knee, and ankle. And for those of you who work out and you do any kind of weightlifting or yoga, the only thing I ask you is to make sure in your pose or in your workout, your earlobe and your shoulder and your hip are in one alignment. So whether you are doing a pull or whether you're cycling, right? Don't give me that because you'll end up becoming my patient. So that's your choice. But if you want to maintain a proper alignment, it's to earlobe, shoulder, and hip are in one alignment. So if you're cycling, if you're doing lat pull downs, shoulder, earlobe, and hip, and if you're doing any kind of running on the treadmill, make sure that your earlobe, shoulder, and hips are in alignment. And should you do it on an incline, please do not go over four for more than a minute or two, okay? Unless you're doing like a high, high aerobic activity. We analyze the body in three planes of movement, which is forward, backward, side to side, and rotation. So I don't want to bore you with a lot of medical terms, and I want to get to the point for you. Basically, you are one complete dynamic human being. Every single part is connected to each other. So if you see a, a problem that is vivid to you in one section, whether it's your head position, your hip position, your foot position, your lower back or shoulders, seek the other areas. Why? Because the muscles in the front balance the muscles in the back, the muscles on the right balance the muscles in the left. And then when you pull the muscles out, you got a condition, you have a situation called your fascia. That is not, that's a covering of the muscles. The fascias are extremely important and extremely painful when you go for massages. If they've been overloaded, they will affect systems. They will affect muscular system, not a particular muscle, not a deltoid, not a trap, not a subscapular, not a, you know, a latissimus or rhomboid or glute, especially if you're working out. When you're working with fascias, you're looking at systems. You're looking at the upper body system. You're looking at the lower body system. So you're looking for a group of muscles that have been affected. So going back to the title of this webinar, which is chronic pain. When you're in a poor position and when you, you repeatedly have been in this poor position or that position, you will create a fascia complex, which includes your muscles, tendons, ligaments, muscle, and the fascia surrounding that area. And since they all attach to your skeletal system, now they already recruited your muscular system and your joints being wear and tear. Now, do you work? This is called repetitive stress injury. Repetitive stress injury is basically the pain that you feel in the musculoskeletal system due to overuse. Now, whether you're working at home, you still take out the trash, right? Or you decide to do a home project and you pick something up on top of the cabinet. Or if you are cooking in the kitchen and you're repeatedly moving in rotation movements, or if you tend to be more on a computer or you tend to do a little bit of repetitive movement, even not from working from home. So, uh, if you're a tattoo artist, if you're a dentist, and if you're a dental hygienist, or if you're an artist that works on the, comp on the, uh, the paper, you are actually having the same exact biomechanics and ergonomics of repetitive stress injury. You're affecting your upper body, shoulders, lower back that impacts your fingers. So this is the muscular aspect, but your nervous system has 
other component. It has something called the autonomic nervous system. So I'm going to go into that as well. So keep on, keep this image and keep thinking about the things that you do physically that is impacting that. If you have friends and family who work in logistics, UPS, FedEx, uh, postal service, and they're picking and packing, or they are working on an assembly line, please, please have them watch this webinar because it could make an impact in their life so they don't become, end up being a surgical case. This is then what happens to the overall body and the impact of an imbalance. Now, the, those of you who are working from home or you have, you have children that are homeschooling, which one of those positions is, are you predominantly? And sorry, the typos. You picked your posture, you picked your uh, pattern. If you picked your pattern, you already know you have a problem. So knowledge is one thing and doing something about it is another, right? So let's talk about another system of your body, which is called your nervous system. Your nervous system is a channel that goes through your spine. Your spine acts like a tunnel that's carrying this information superhighway. When you're sitting in a poor position, you actually compress the path and the flow of these nerves to the body and back. So if, did you notice like here, there's a lot of blue dots. These are the pathways of the nerves that come from ladies around your bra line and gentlemen between your shoulder blades, below your shoulder blades, all the way down to your lower back. That entire section feeds to your internal organs, your digestive system. A lot of doctors think your digestive system is your second brain because it controls your whole entire chemical balance. So remember we talked about the three, the triangle of health being physical, chemical, and emotional balance. Well, your physical patterns are affecting your chemical behavior. The nerves that feed your stomach doesn't know what to do unless the nervous system tells it what to do. So it can distinguish between uh, carrot juice versus a tequila or where's a chili versus a lettuce, right? So your, how your body digests and uh, you know, steak compared to uh, mashed potato. So how your body digests and presents proper organ enzymes, proper way of digesting the system, take out the nutrient, everything is a chemical process. If you're compressing this neurological pathways because of your posture, don't be surprised having conditions such as gastritis, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic bloatiness, and don't blame the foods as your source of problem. They're not the underlying cause of your problem. They're an aggravation to an already existing condition. So when you find the underlying cause of your problem, it is already a process of the body being in a disease state. You cannot just try to fix the stomach or the, uh, the digestive tract system, whichever level that you're being affected. You can't just treat that without treating other factors. Your body is three aspects, chemical, physical, and mental balance. So reducing, balancing your emotional state, improving your physical body, and addressing the chemical issue, addressing the disease problem is a three-way system. You can't just pop a pill and expect that pill to be the magical and go in and know all, all about it. It's not going to happen. So if you're going to invest your time in your health and wellness, whether it's uh, a combination treatment of medical and holistic, then combine the two together. So you have a higher emotional state, a better life, a healthier life. Another factor that I want to share with you is uh, rounded shoulders due to keyboard or texting will cause and affect your heart and your lung. It reduces oxygenation to the tissue. That lack of oxygenation to the tissue predisposes you to chronic fatigue syndrome. And it also will cause effect, uh, the oxygenation will also affect your brain fogginess. So if you keep finding yourself being fatigued in the afternoon or you're having some memory issues or it takes you a little longer to think about things or process things or having, affects your cognitive behavior, it affects your co concentration, 
change your posture and add some breathing exercises so we can get the whole system taken care of. Your body is not just muscles. Your body is not just a chemical balance or just the organs. Your body is a kinematic chain physically and a one complete unit in a full visual. So let's talk about the nerves that we don't see that don't directly come off and give you like a numbness and tingling in certain levels, whether it's your fingers or your legs. Let's talk about the effect on the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is like two pearls on the side of your spine. These nerves come out, they make a little nodule where they actually conglomerate and kind of exchange information. And then they feed out to the organs. This is when your heart beats, your lung breathes, your st stomach goes through a digestive process, your uh, hormones are balanced, your pancreas is addressing its sugar balance, you have your adrenals addressing the stress factor, non-stress factor, your reproductive organs, your digestive organ, your, your whole entire systems of your body is controlled by the autonomic nervous system, right? Also your eyes blinking, right? That's another factor. When your posture is affected, this is the secondary impact on your autonomic nervous system because you're affecting the tunnel where the information is coming through. So when we talk about posture, when we talk about chronic conditions, it's not just musculoskeletal and it doesn't just stay in the aches and pain realm of physical problem. It does affect your organs. So if you have a condition of poor posture, sinus and allergies get checked. If you have a condition of poor posture, rounded shoulders and uh, lack of energy, or change in your mood, or then contact your local chiropractor or send us a message, we can do a telemedicine. If you have digestive problems and you tend to be having a straight lower back or no curve or too much curve in your lower back or rounded up your upper back, listen to this webinar and know that there is something a little bit more than just the condition of your organs there's just a little bit something more to the story than just the aches and pains you're feeling. So if you're going to invest your time and energy, why not address the whole thing from the foundation and look for the underlying cause to fix this problem? Have you experienced any pains or aches in these areas? If you have, you're already in the second phase of degeneration where we call the phase two, where there's actually changes in the integrity of your spine, uh, especially if you're sitting and you're in a poor ergonomic position. The key indicators before you get to this point, for those of you who don't have it, is uh, neck pain, headaches, upper back pain, uh, neck pain, headache, upper back pain, and poor posture, all right? So these are the three key indicators for you that the problem is still is starting to become chronic rather than acute unless you've been in a car accident or is this is trauma induced. When you're working, I want you, let's talk about something sweet, right? There's something called a sweet zone, which means that it's within your sphere of influence. So when you're setting up your work desk, you want to make sure that uh, you have your usual workspace where you have your papers and your keyboard, then your reach level should be almost as far as your finger reach where you can actually grab something. So if you're putting your documents on a document holder, if your screen is in front of you, or if your phone is in front of you, or some other information, something that you need to access, even your copy, your coffee cup should be in your occasional workspace because you occasionally sip it. And this, anything farther than your arm reach is in a non-working area. So you want to measure that off of that, uh, off of this whole, um, parameters, okay? And then another factor is how you sit is very important. Do me a favor if you don't remember anything from this. The worst place to sit is in the middle of a chair because it has a high margin of error in uh, affecting your posture. So either sit all the way at the end of the chair where your posture is at a 90 degree angle or forced into a 90 degree angle, or sit at the edge of the seat where a sneeze will fall, cause you to 
slip. And the reason you do that, you basically, by sitting at the edge of a chair, you almost hack the nervous system. And how you do that is the body's innate intelligence wakes up to keep an alert of keeping your body in an upright position to minimize injury. Your innate intelligence has the ability to protect you. So on that note, sitting at the edge of the chair that you're working or all the way back is comfort and security where your body knows it's at the right 90 degree angle. So there's minimal margin of error or at the edge of a chair, you wake up your innate intelligence in order to be able to have a proper curves to minimize the amount of damage. Another factor, make sure your screen is exactly, if you, if you extend your arm out like this, your fingers should be touching the bottom of your screen. So a lot of ergonomists think that that should be the top of your screen. So I beg to differ and I tell you why. Your spine is, has a curve. If you put your screen at your eye level or the top of your screen is at your eye level or arm ridge, you actually promote straight neck. However, if you tilt your chin about 10 to 15 degrees, by moving your screen a little bit higher. So the center of your screen, your eye level should be at the bottom of your screen. When you're sitting upright, you automatically tilt your head up a little bit. This promotes the curve and helps reduce those suboccipital headaches that have a pattern going behind your ear, right? So try that. And, uh, ah. Another factor I wanted to know, tell you, to share with you is if you're standing, make sure, sorry, I just had a little hot flash alert. So if you're standing, make sure that you stand during the day and you sit in the afternoon. By alternating your sitting and standing position, you reduce restless leg syndrome, you reduce overload on the muscles of the back, especially lower back, and also you promote the circulation. Of course, adding other factors, such as putting something at the bottom of your foot where you actually put your foot up is going to be very effective, as well as uh, um, you know, making sure that you are standing on a cushioned surface, right? So it would avoid varicose pain. So what I did is uh, based on my clinical experience and ergonomic and biomechanic knowledge, I put together a kit for everyone. Because I used to recommend products for people to buy. And they would get lost in the whole sea of Amazon of what to buy. And it would be very confusing, right? So what I want you to do is go to my website, scopebacksu.com or thinkhealthy.com, either one, and get your posture kit. Your posture kit is going to give you a couple of things. One, it's going to give you the tools you need to relax those knotted muscles because we need to relax the muscles to make the change. If you go work out on a poor body, you make things worse and you accelerate your wear and tear. So make sure that we reduce the muscle spasm. Then we have to promote the curve in the neck. Then we have to prevent injuries. So you have a specific posture support based on you. Make sure you get your size to bring your shoulders back and push your upper, your slouch torso into an upright position and bring your shoulders into alignment. So it's a two vector mechanism. It's not just one. Please do not waste your money and injure your body by buying cheap products on Amazon that compress the armpit. If you buy a posture support that compresses your armpits, you already, you should might as well schedule an office visit with me because it's gonna hurt you. It's gonna compress the nerves that come on from underneath your arm. And they go to these three fingers and these two fingers. We call that the brachial plexus. It will cause you to have weakness and it gives you a false carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms. So do not get a posture product that compresses your armpit. You make things worse uh, and cherry on top. It causes your head to go more forward. So you actually promote forward head syndrome or text neck. Uh, save your body. So I also put together, if you have numbness and tingling in your arms already, I need you to get the neck kit. And the reason I created the neck kit is because first we have to traction the neck, remove the pressure from the nerve. Then we have to relax the muscles, 
reduce the slouching of the forward head carriage. On top of that, give you proper exercises for your posture so your neck and your upper back and your mid back are strong enough to not cause that forward head position that pinches the nerve that affects your arms. The reason I recommend the back stew posture support is not because I made it. I made it because people needed it. The reason I recommend back stew posture support is mainly because of the fact that it is tested by University of Michigan. It is tested at corporate wellness and the results are phenomenal. 90% improvement of posture within 12 weeks. But most importantly, it took me about two and a half years and almost 200 prototypes to figure out how to biomechanically go around the shoulder and avoid the compression on the brachial plexus, but at the same time, correct the shoulder and the back. So yes, it is a higher quality product because it delivers a higher purpose and higher result for the body. So those are the other products that I have for you. Oh, um, on an added note, I also, it is covered on your flex spending account and health savings account. Just so you know, in case you have that, you could use your card for health benefit in order to purchase this. Your flex spending account and your health savings account. So now that we talked about ergonomics and we talked about posture, let's talk about the other half of our day, which is our sleep or trying to go to sleep. Almost half of your day spent sleeping. So I wanna to talk to you about different types of pillows. Pick your pattern, which one is you? When you are asleep, which one is you? Ah, you picked your posture? I know which one I am, but go for it. All right. So when we recommend pillows to patients, a lot of times my patients are like, so what kind of pillow do I get? You have two components to a pillow when purchasing a pillow. You have a feeling and you have functionality. So there's an emotional effect to a pillow, whether it's soft, whether it's hard, like what, what is your, what do you enjoy? What is your, what do you like? That's the most important. That's the consistency of the pillow. Then we work about the functionality. Functionality is my department. So it's my department to give you advice what is right for you, what position. If you have a straight neck, make sure you get something like two, three, four or six. If you have poor posture and straight neck, you want to definitely focus on number three. That's my recommendation to you. If you don't have poor posture, you could use anything between one, five and seven. The reason being is you have seven hours that you're sleeping. Okay, some of us might sleep a little more, a little bit less, right? So let's say between six to eight hours you're sleeping. Make your time work for you. Make that time that you're spending work towards your health. So invest in your health when you're sleeping so you don't have to do anything else. Having correct neck pillow ergonomics is going to be very effective in wake, helping you wake up with a better, uh, more rejuvenated and well slept. So if you are a side sleeper, definitely number two and number six are going to be more effective for you. If you are a back sleeper, number three and number four are going to be very effective for you. And if you are a stomach sleeper, you gotta move to your side, my dear. That's what you gotta do because uh, at least initiate your sleep by being on your side, okay? Or if you're a stomach sleeper, make sure that you have uh, one of those square pillows that your arm can go through so you're not compressing your arm and put a pillow in between your knees and that would definitely help you. You could use one of these one, five, and seven to put in between your knees. And ergonomics, again, I can't emphasize enough on your proper ergonomics. It goes all the way back. The foundation of ergonomics is based on the alignment of the earlobe, shoulder, hip, and the 90 degree angle so we can reduce the minimal damages to the body. I also have an ergonomic kit that I put together for my patients because we found out that even though they're using the home kit, whether it's the headache kit, the neck pain kit, or the posture kit, but they have eight to six to eight hours of work time, right? And some of us who are working at home, probably 10 to 14 hours of work time. So when you're trying to find your comfort zone between the 
the bed and the coffee table and the dining table and back on the couch and the kitchen counter, use an adjustable uh, table. So I put together a whole kit and uh, specifically for you, if you wanna assess your ergonomics, especially if you're doing homeschooling with your kids, please get this kit, okay? It's very, it's very travel friendly, it's light, it's foldable, it's easy and uh, it's just easy. So these are the kits I put together. I specifically put these kits together for better health for you and your family. So you actually become smart patients rather than patients in need of an appointment. Uh, and if you are a patient, use these in order to accelerate your care process so you're not aggravating your condition during that other nine hours when you're not in the clinic to be taken care of. Uh, my name is Dr. Romina. Every Wednesday, it's Wellness Wednesday webinars. I bring you my knowledge, my experience, and solutions to help you take care of yourself in the comfort of your home. Sorry, I need to update that address. You can always reach me at... Uh, my website, just click on there, send me a message if I could be of help. If you need to make an appointment, contact us over there. And if you want a copy of this webinar, don't hesitate to just uh, go to my website. It's always downloaded there and available. Should you like to uh, see other ones, I have some on neck pain, headaches, and different parts of your, my body, different parts of the body. So again, thank you for your time. I really appreciate you meeting me every Thursday. And uh, see you next week. Stay tuned on the next topic. Thank you and have a great day. Okay. I think I got this system down properly. See you, everyone.